We're home now. I'm home now. Listening to Van Morrison, of all people. Here in Fife, it is quiet. I live in a tourist town, but right now, there are no tourists. Selfishly, I am loving this quiet, this freedom to walk around without dodging ice cream gathered youngsters. I have had a dozen, and then a dozen, and then a dozen more interviews. I've smiled down the phone, I have misheard questions due to my staring out of the window and replied with the first thing that came to my mind. No one has noticed, or at least, no one has complained. I have worn a silly hat for a Zoom call. I have feigned an interest in the Scottish actor from Doctor Who. I have dragged up old memories of old comrades and told vanilla tales of our times on the road. But that was years ago. Do you really want to talk about that? This album campaign has been short, condensed. It has been world-scattered strangers discussing the album as a happening. The fact that there were so many of us in the studio doing our thing. It felt entirely normal then, of course. But now, within the lockdown, it seems like an excessive luxury, those bodies in a room. The sort of thing only a Premier League footballer or an errant politician could afford to do. And I wonder when we will next be back on the road. I can assure you, I do not miss the airports. And I can assure you, I do not miss the motorways. Here, the North Sea is cold. The wind brings the cold. The salt of the sea rests upon my lips. I wonder how long they can keep this up, this lockdown. Myself locked down in this most fortunate of places. I've only done one or perhaps two live on the internet song shows. They went down well. There was a camaraderie amongst the viewers. And what was interesting were the comments from those who couldn't usually make it to a show, regardless of COVID, due to health or finance or geography. They seemed genuinely pleased that I'd made the effort. Yet another mutation of the virus. Earlier today, I took my parents to get their vaccination. Yesterday, one of their friends got their own vaccination, but she had slipped on the ice on the way out and broke her ankle. What state of affairs is this? I cannot think of her pain. And the guy three streets down, well, he slept and broke his arm. He's laughing about it, saying it'll fix well enough. But he's young and he doesn't yet know the ache of broken bones that return winter after winter. I bite into a grape. It is cool and it is crisp and it is coated with a substance that keeps it fresh for a thousand days.
there's a legend in this village, a myth, a ghost story from 100 years ago. A brave young fellow had been shell-shocked in Ypres, unable to speak to tell his story, just one of the many nameless amongst the wounded. But one winter night, his fog somehow cleared, and he had remembered who he was, where he should be, which was up here, of course. The story goes that he simply walked out of the ward, out of the hospital, into the darkness and began his trek north. By the time he arrived, he had lost his ward slippers, sunken through his woolen socks, was frozen cold, aching ever forwards. He reached St. James Street, which is on the shore, but though it hardly changed in his years away, he'd walked himself into such a thick black dwell that he could not remember where he should be. He scurried back and forth, forth and back, no one recognizing or claiming him in this middle of the night until... Well, he died. You'd have guessed that, I'm sure. of a story, however tragic. Now it continues as on a certain day, if the weather is right, if the cold has descended, the shadow of the salt of memory of his spirit can still be seen, lurking into windows, trying to remember, to remember where he should be. And my studio is on that street. Every time I lift a guitar, open a door or pull a blind, I expect him to be waiting listening, smiling perhaps, reminding me how lucky I am. <laughs> 